So today's video is a throwback video. I had done this um, earlier in the year and I was just now getting around to making the video. Uh, this is an actually a windmill blade. Um, my first one I've ever done like this. And this one was damaged and the customer sent it to me and I repaired it so that I could use it as a pattern. Um, so I could just duplicate right off of it and I'm just filling in all the cracks with Bondo just to give it the shape that it had. It was kind of concaved on that side, so it was a pretty interesting deal. I've never um, done a concave blade before, so that was a little bit of a challenge, but I just used Bondo and shaped it all back to where it should be. And this was actually going on a Zenith wind charger, and they um, made these back in the 30s for a, um, a little wind generator called the wind charger and they used it to charge six volt radio batteries um, so we uh, just took three pieces of maple and I didn't cut them out on the bandsaw because it's pretty much just a straight blade and we glued those up. I think it was one and a half or two inches thick, so I had to plane down my boards, but we just planed them down and glued them up. And of course, with our glue, it has to set in the press for 14 hours to cure. And for glue, we use a DAP plastic weldwood resin, and it's just a powder that you mix with water. It's been around for a really long time. And it's what all the previous owners of the Culver Company had used. So it's definitely some tried and true stuff, which I tend to lean to. Um, on this video, for some reason, I've messed up the sound. So there is no background noise. I'm definitely a prop maker and not a video editor. So I promise I'm trying to get better, but you may have to suffer through a few videos of stuff like this where I don't get everything together on it. Um, and you can see my dog Abby in the background. She comes in every day and I'm in the blue and Katrina is in the gray shirt and Katrina is my best friend. She's, um, she's mil her husband's military. So they're stationed here for a little bit. And she said, why don't I just come to the shop and help you? And I said, okay, that'd be great. <laughs> So she never ran any power tools or anything and just jumped right in there. And now she can use a bandsaw, a drill, every sander, just basically anything you ask her to. So that's been a lot fun, a lot of fun at the shop to have, to be able to work with your best friend is pretty cool. So there you can see that we're pinning um, the boards together so they don't move and shift whenever we put them in the press. And this is like max diameter for my press. So we have to put it in and um, it just, just barely fits. <laughs> but then after it goes in the press, it's gonna stay in there at about 75 PSI for 14 hours. So because this was a new pattern, I didn't have everything lined out for um, attachment points. There was no template that I go off of. So I kind of had to do all this on the fly. And then I also had um, his pattern that I had to adapt to put into the lathe. So I just drilled a hole in the end of it and uh, my dad welded a washer onto the end of a screw. And that's how we put it in the lathe. So this is just a test rotation um, for me to make sure that I'm centered there to make sure that I'm just all aligned there to make sure that, you know, every part of the blade is touching so I know it all cuts out. And there's my wonderful little <laughs> attachment point. And then you just turn the lathe on. This is, of course, super high speed. And it took about 30 minutes to cut this side of the blade. So then I came back and I did a second cut. I always do a rough cut and then I come back and I do a final cut. 
my blade does a better job making a nice, clean, accurate cut when I do it that way. And you can see a little bit of the concave blade there. So then I shaped the hub, I mean, just I just brought it down to exact dimensions there. There wasn't really a lot of shaping to do, more than just trimming off the edges. I did have a lot of work to do on the tip there. With 103 inches, my machine won't cut out that far. I just have the material left that I can hand cut it to be that long. So, I'd have a little bit of help on that one. And then the sanding. So the airfoil side was pretty easy. It sanded out pretty nice, no big deal. Um, I mean, it was a lot to sand just diameter wise, but it wasn't hard at all. Didn't prove to be difficult. I always use the belt sander first. I use 60 or 80 grit depending on what I'm doing. And it really actually makes pretty quick work of it. It'll probably take me, oh, about 10, maybe 15 minutes to sand out the whole um, airfoil side on both blades. So it's really not bad at all. And we're usually pretty careful about what tools we use. I like a lightweight tool because it's easier on my arms since I'm going to be doing it for a while. And that little porter cable is just absolutely perfect for it. I call it our little armadillo. For some reason, I think it looks like an armadillo. The hub usually takes a little bit more work, so I kind of concentrate in that area sometimes, um, whereas the rest of the blade I have to keep moving. So this gives you a little bit of a view of the how it's concaved there, and that proved to be quite the challenge when we sanded it. It was a little bit difficult. And then I'm using the grinder on the tip there um, because I had so much material to remove. I have a sanding flap wheel type kind of thing that I put on a grinder and just grind it down. It makes pretty quick work at it. It's a little bit scary to use at first because, I mean, it's wonderful because it takes the material off so fast, but also it gives you the opportunity to screw up really fast as well. So... After I do that, then I go back to my air sander. I use a Dyna braid because it, again, is very light, um, air powered. And I usually use 60 to 80 grit sandpaper on that. And I'm just basically taking out all the lines that the belt sander made. And this can take, you know, maybe, maybe 30 minutes a blade. Um, and then I go to balancing. So this one was important. Well, they're all important to get super balanced vertically and horizontally. And this one, um, thankfully balanced well vertically because I really didn't know where I was going to take it off at if it didn't. Um, most of the time I can take weight off at the hub, um, by thinning it and getting in the you know, right where it blends to the blade, but I didn't have that here. So there wasn't a lot of places to take material off of, but it all balanced out well, so that was great. Um, this had a little bit larger uh, center pilot hole than we normally use, so we had to fly cut it. And I love a slow motion fly cut because I love seeing all those little chips fly off. <laughs> 
and there's the finished product ready to go to its owner and get put on the charger and 